So, hi everyone, and it's very nice to be here. It's a cool conference, my first time, and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, you will see something interesting in the next 20 minutes. Um, my topic is visualizing data, and visualizing is not a purpose on its own, so it's always about communicating the data or contents information that's contained in the data. And uh, so let's, let's start with some of the basics. So first of all, let's have a look at this picture. So the task is to find the outlier. And as uh, most probably all of you will see, on, on the left side, it's quite easy. You'll be able to find the outlier very fast. And on the right side, it's slow. So there's a reason for this. And that's basically. Um, one of the uh, things you have to consider when you create or design graphics or um, visualizations, how do you get the message to the user, basically? So, and we, um, we humans are uh, made in a certain way, uh, how we perceive uh, data, information, graphics, and so on. And there are basically three modes of perception that are controlling how we understand and data or visualizations about data. And these three modes are the pre-attentive mode, mode for pattern recognition, and well, the, the uh, attentive mode, basically, where we uh, have to really search for what is to be seen in the data. The pre-attentive mode, it's very fast. It allows us to um, basically uh, get information in a parallel processing way so we can extract simultaneously several uh, pieces of information. And it's perceived on our side as almost effortless. So we don't, uh, we don't really uh, uh, feel uh, the, the, the effort for getting the information. It's, it's, it's automatic. So and um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's in some way also below the level of consciousness. We cannot really control whether we get this information or not. It's basically there immediately. Um, the second mode, it's about pattern recognition. And uh, this is, yeah, I, I wrote semi-fast. But uh, basically, this is something you can train. Yeah? Any expert uh, for, for a certain topic uh, uh, knows that uh, the, uh, the time for seeing the important pieces of a graphic or visualization uh, is, is decreasing with the amount of experience and training. And, uh, but there's also something behind the so-called laws of Gestalt. Um, it's basically the, the way how our brain forms these pattern, patterns in, in, in our mind. And the third mode. This is slow. It's basically a sequential search. And that's what you had to do in the first graphic on the right side. You had to search through all the items to find the outlier. And you had to basically do uh, comparisons between all of the objects there. So and that's slow. And that's nothing. Uh, that's, it's not the way we want to transfer information. Or basically, not, not, not always. So, but um, when, we, when we look um, at, at graphics or visualization on a conceptual level, then we can, we can decompose them. And uh, here, I've, I've, I've written down the main properties of a graphic. And um, the, the most important thing, we are very good uh, at uh, finding uh, the position and seeing differences uh, between uh, locations on a graphic, let's say, several points. Here's a point cloud. And of course, um, the, the things that we put on a graphic have a shape, size, color. If we talk about a line, they have orientations, length, and, and several other properties. And, um, but uh, that, that looks very simple, right? So, so basically, when, you, when you're familiar with tools for, for creating graphics, like ggplot or something like this in, in R, um, then you have, uh, these are called something like aesthetics. And you can control them separately. But, um, it's not that simple, actually, because when you, when you look at, uh, at any of the things here, um, they have basically all these attributes together. So they're not independent. And uh, if you want to um, transfer, uh, uh, transport information um, via one of these properties, then it's, it's not so easy to do it uh, separately. So you have, to be, uh, you have to know a little bit more about how we process it and how we understand it. And as, especially how much amount of information each of these dimensions or, or properties can carry. And that's what I've, um, what I've uh, listed up here. And for me, in, in most of the situations, the relevant amount of information is the, the, the information that is coming through the pre-attentive mode. So what's coming effortless without 
having a deeper knowledge. And that's uh, the, the best thing is position. We are very sensitive for, for position, for positions information, and um, we are also quite good at uh, color and brightness. They are a little bit mixed up together, so it's not, uh, we cannot, uh, yeah, we can distinguish between approximately eight uh, different types of color and brightness in combination. Um, and the other things like size or orientation, and, and, and yeah, for, for shape, length, and the type size, and so on for the lines, I could not find uh, a good literature or good uh, scientific results on this, but, but the uh, rule of thumb is something like three to five uh, different uh, types we, we, we can uh, discriminate, basically. And so, so if we go beyond this border, then we enter this attentive mode, where the, getting the information is slow and, uh, well, attention is a very, uh, yeah, it's a rare resource and uh, you get tired very soon if you have to uh, sequentially search through an image, yeah? And basically, I think we all, we all know this. And, um, but there's also one, one other thing to mention, um, especially, uh, well, uh, for humans, uh, what, what you see in, in most of the graphics is the, uh, a massive use of color, yeah, or color and brightness in combination. And this is uh, to some degree problematic because we have a very different perception of color. So uh, typically, most of us have three cone cells and we are able to distinguish between these approximately eight uh, degrees or color brightness uh, combination. Um, but uh, there are also some people that have four um, four types of cone cells. It's, uh, it's, it's only for those who have two X chromosomes. So I'm, I'm not in this group, definitely. Um, and uh, th they can distinguish more colors. They have a much brighter uh, color vision. And there's also people like me. I'm green weak, so-called. So, -called, so I'm, my, my, my green cone cell is not really working properly. And there are also people that only have two types of cone cells, so-called dichromates. So there's a variety yeah, in, inside all of us, and, uh, and it's not so easy to transport information using color. Yeah? We all know these colorblind uh, schemes and so on. It's, it's, it's uh, something to consider. I'm, I'm not using color too much because, well, I, I'm not very good at uh, getting information from this. So, but when, when you look at these numbers, they are very small. And my talk is about visualizing high-dimensional data, so typically you have lots of information to yeah, to, to communicate. So how, how do we do this? And uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, it's not really possible, but um, we can at least bring these attributes in, in, in a certain order uh, of, of usefulness. So position is the most useful thing. It's very fast. We can, we can discriminate a high number of different positions. Um, Concerning color, I said use with care, but it's still, f f f if you know uh, that, that someone uh, can discriminate the colors you're using, then it's very effective for trans transferring uh, information as well. Shape and orientation are a little bit below, um, but still, um, if you want to build graphics that are easy to understand by a user or visualizations, um, then um, you should try to address this pre-attentive mode. Yeah? I, I say exploit this as much as you can, but there's, of course, a drawback. Um, as I said, you cannot control this consciously, so this information reaches you regardless whether you want it or not. So typically, this is something you would call manipulation, and that's also used for, from, uh, in, in, in different fields where, where manipulation is useful. Yeah? And it's not, it's, it, it must not be something bad or something, but it's, it's more like, for example, Apple is, is building their graphics. When, when, they use a, when, they, when they draw a pie chart about their share of business in, in the whole world, then they are using colors that look bigger than the other colors, so that their share of the pie, uh, besides it has the correct sizing, looks bigger. So, and that's what I mean. So it's basically, you, you cannot avoid this. It's a, that's an impression you get, and uh, so exploit it as much as you can, as long as you're, yeah, as, as long as you, uh, as it's uh, the thing you want to do. I personally try to avoid these uh, manipulation style things. Um, I try to be very explicit what I put inside my graphics and visualizations, and that's something that I would recommend anyway. Um, really write down what you want to put in the graphics. Have some documentation. Yeah, that's that's basically it. And don't don't leave it up to the user what uh, what the interpretation is. So. Um, the second mode, the pattern detection mode, um, 
this is a quote that I found in, in, in some blog, and it's, a, it's, it's basically a good summary of what, what we do. We humans prefer meaningful situations and objects. So that's basically one of our biggest biases when we look at something. Yeah, we always try to see something we know. Yeah? And um, there are some uh, principles here uh, or, 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 um, yeah, that, uh, that um, guide this. And uh, for one of the principles here, I, I, I want to have uh, a small, I've prepared a small demo. But maybe let's explain the words first. Emergence is something like um, when you see the whole before you see the parts. Yeah, that's it's, uh, how perception works is, is, is a little bit, uh, well, it's somewhat magic because um, typically when you, when you look at it from an analytical point of view, um, you can come up with two ways. You see the whole and then you divide it into parts and uh, your understanding about the whole picture gives you information about the parts of the picture. And the second one is you do the other way around. You have the pieces together and then you build the picture. So that's, uh, that's top down and bottom up. And emergence is more or less the first one. And it's, uh, but it's, 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 high. it's very, uh, well, it's, it's not really clear how do we identify the whole before we have understood the parts. So in this, um, the other parts, multi-stability, for example, this is, you, you all know these pictures that have two different interpretations. And once we've seen this, our interpretation of this is always switching between these two modes. Reification, it's, uh, it's very funny. Um, maybe we'll see this as well later. It's, it's something our mind is filling gaps. So if you draw a dashed line, then we know it's a line still. Yeah? But there are gaps, and that's, that's, uh, that's what reification does. So we add something in order to make the situation more meaningful. Yeah? And that's basically something very helpful, but on the other hand, it also means that everything we see is constructed by ourselves. Yeah? So that's the bias we are having. And, um, but still, um, if, if we, uh, as I said, we prefer meaningful things, so if it's constructed the right way, then you can use it, you can train it, and you can be, uh, become much faster in understanding um, graphics. So, but now the demo. What's this? Any, any suggestions? So at the moment, it's, it's, not, it's not really clear, right? It's not sufficient information. So, so what about this? So, OK, but that's, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, it's, it's, it's not much information, but I think one can at least see they are different, right? So, OK, and I think now it's quite clear what it is. And uh, the interesting thing is that, um, that, that's basically a demo for emergence. Yeah? On the first slide, it's, it's not clear what, what the thing should be. On the last slide, it's clear that the one thing is a nose and the other one is the a, is a parts of a clock. Yeah? But basically, this, this graphic is built out of exactly the same components with a slightly rearrangement. Yeah? And the, the, in, our interpretation is totally different. Yeah? This is good because it means we can make a big impact with minimum changes, but it's also risky. Yeah? I mean, that's, that's, that, that might be a funny example, but when you, when you design a, a more complex uh, visualization, then the one user might see the left part of the, the other one might see the right part, and yeah, I mean, they're totally different. Minor changes can make a big impact, and that's basically uh, done by this pattern recognition thing, because we construct what we see. Yeah? I mean, on the left side, it's not a face. It's just a circle and some lines, yeah? But we see a face. Okay, and, and how is this done? There's these so-called laws of Gestalt. And this is a complete uh, quote that I found. These laws of Gestalt, they, they are uh, basically uh, the rules that, uh, that, that do this. And here you see um, three examples of, uh, of, of uh, how, how, what these laws of Gestalt basically mean. On, on the left side, we see something that um, we, have, we, have, we have two well, contradicting informations, yeah? Our, our first interpretation would be there's one, one line and there's one other line, yeah? That's okay, but the color information is conflicting with this. The color is more powerful in this case. It suggests that the, the red things are similar and the black things are similar, so that they put together. The second part is, is more interesting because it's, it's, uh, it refers to the construction part. What you see over there, it's, it's basically, yeah, we would interpret it as, as the, as the picture below, there are three shapes that are uh, overlaid, basically. So, but, but when you look at the shape, it's, it, why? It's just because this is the most simple interpretation how to construct 
the the image above. Yeah, but the um, what I like most is the is the um, yeah the white triangle on the right side. So it's it's a, it's a white triangle, right? But when you when you look at it, basically the right triangle white triangle is not there. There are just three of these Pac-Man guys, and uh, what our brain is doing, it constructs this white triangle. Yeah? You cannot even avoid seeing it. Yeah. Uh, of course, when I constructed this graphic, I had to put the white triangle inside. But uh, if I, yeah, because in in in, uh, in Keynote there is no Pac-Man shape, but uh, basically it's it's constructed. Yeah, it's a uh, it's nothing that is there, and that's um, that's uh, yeah, that's it's highly problematic when you want to uh, yeah transfer a defined amount of information from from yeah from from one person to the other because we construct things differently. Yeah, these laws of Gestalt are similar, but we cannot really know what the other one is seeing. So, and uh, there's, there's another component um, I would, that I would call a courtesy. Yeah, here you see four types of shapes that are most used in, in lots of graphics. And uh, um, the, the question is, how accurate can I uh, communicate the, the ratio of these uh, to uh, so the blue and the gray color, so basically. That's, that's the information of this graphic, yeah? And uh, you see it's not always the same ratio, but it's, a, it's about how accurately can we estimate it. And what do you think? What's, what is the best shape for this? Any ideas? What? Hmm? The bar? Yeah, okay, the bar is actually the worst. But it's, uh, it's, it's the most used. And and these, uh, these um, donuts, for example, they're also quite popular, but um, actually pie chart and donut chart are quite similar, and the squared pie is the best one. But it's basically the least used. But maybe, maybe you know things like tree maps, this, uh, this rectangular uh, form of uh, communicating information is, is very accurate, yeah? and it's, it's very useful. I, I really like it, and uh, I would recommend using more of these shapes and the, these Circular shapes, of course, they are very, they, they look good, yeah? It's aesthetics, but we are not doing aesthetics design, we're doing information design, so and we, we, should, we should try to uh, get the information to the people, right? So, and so, as, as a short summary of this part, why do we visualize the data at all? Yeah, but basically, there are two reasons for this. The first one is we want to understand something. We want to explore things. Yeah? And especially when you, want, when you explore things, you want to avoid this construction bias that is inbuilt in us. So, so you have to be careful with all these kinds of aesthetics and shapes and so on, because um, you, you should use different techniques and uh, slide changes, different perspectives, so in order to, to not, uh, to, to, to at least uh, yeah, have a better chance to avoid this bias. And, but if you want to explain something, or if you want to tell a story, then you can use these, uh, these things that I showed you, the, the, the pre-attentive mode, the manipulation mode, basically. Um, that's, uh, yeah, that, that's the method of choice here. So, and yeah, I, uh, originally this, uh, this, uh, this presentation was uh, designed for a little more time, but at least we can have a look at some let's say, advanced uh, uh, visualization methods, and um, that also address the problem of higher dimensions. So, first of all, um, what's very useful, what you maybe all know, are pair plots. This is from, from, from R, it's one of psych package and ggplot, and uh, here you can see how information is uh, presented in different forms. It's not only visualizing the data, it's also visualizing some statistical mathematical properties of the data. And what we see is it's, it's, it's not only visualizing the data as such, but also some approximations. And in higher dimensions, you have to even compress the amount of information even more, and then you come up with correlation plots, for example. You see on the right side there are several hundreds variables that it, it scales somehow. Okay, but still, there are, uh, the problem is that there's basically no, no accurate method for showing, representing high dimensional data and low dimensional space. So we only have two or three dimensions and there are some methods uh, how we try to get around this. We use these simulated dimensions like color, size, shape and approximation methods. And the other problem is that we don't really have an understanding of quality. What's the high quality visualization? Yeah, it's, not really, it's not really clear and uh, as I said, they are basically all wrong, but some are useful. And so and, uh, I uh, wanted to show you some of the things, uh, let, let's skip this for here, how, it, uh, how it's um, done mathematically. 
and um, this is basically some state-of-the-art uh, yeah, data visualization techniques. And here we cross the border to um, machine learning, because it's basically all unsupervised learning. We have a high-dimensional manifold. In this case, it's only three dimensions. But of course, then we, we, we plot it down to uh, two dimensions. And what you see here is they, we, we, can, we can at least uh, retain some of the properties, but not all. And yeah, so that's, uh, that's basically what I wanted to say in the end. Data visualization is always some kind of approximation and construction. And yeah, it's, it's nothing uh, that should be done uh, well uh, without knowing what you do. So yeah, thanks for uh, your attention and have a nice day.